अभी कहां से शुरू करना आ, चीनी <laughs> भारत और चीनी हम चीनी को चीनी क्यों कहते हैं और फिर चीनी का आपके परिवार से क्या संबंध है <laughs> पहली बात है कि चीनी शब्द जब कान में पड़ता है तो आदमी चीन की सोचता है और शायद सही सोचता है क्योंकि अंग्रेजों ने एक ट्रेडिंग पैटर्न इस्टेब्लिश किया था सौ साल सवा सौ साल पहले उससे भी पहले उसमें वो जिसको वो न्यू वर्ल्ड बोलते थे यानी कि लैटिन अमेरिका वहां से वो चांदी और सोना ले आते थे बड़ी बड़ी खदानों में से भारत में उसका व्यापार करते थे यहाँ से वो स्पाइसेस ले जाते थे और फिर चाइना से वो चाय ले आते थे और चाय की पत्तियां भारत में बेचते थे इसमें चीनी का बहुत बड़ा योगदान था क्यों कि वेस्ट इंडीज में उन लोग ने चीनी का उत्पादन शुरू किया शुगर केन की खेती वहां से शुरू होती है चीन से चाय और भारत से दूध तो इन तीनों चीजों का जो मिश्रण होता है वो हमारी धरती पे होता है भारतवर्ष उसके ऑथर थे अंग्रेज तो अब जो ये पूरा देश अपने को इतना राष्ट्रवादी मानता है इसकी जो सबसे बुरी आदत है कि सब लोग दूध वाली चीनी वाली चाय पीते हैं और ये आदत अंग्रेजों ने सिखा रखी है हुजूर। इसी से जुड़ी है हमारे परिवार की भी कहानी हमारे जो माँ के जो पर बाबा थे यानी कि उनके ग्रेट ग्रैंडफादर उनका नाम था दीवान जयप्रकाश लाल मतलब जयप्रकाश लाल नाम था दीवान उनकी टाइटल थी राय बहादुर थे तुमराव करके एक राज्य होता था बिहार में उस वक्त वन ऑफ द फाइव सिक्सटी फाइव प्रिंसली स्टेट ऑफ इंडिया तो डुमराव के जो महाराजा थे उन्होंने दीवान जयप्रकाश लाल को बुलाया ट्यूटर के रूप में अपने लड़के को संभालने के काफी बिगड़े हुए थे वो लेकिन उनको संभाल लिया तो इनाम के रूप में उनको डुमराव महाराजा की तरफ से जयप्रकाश लाल को एक बड़ी सी जायदाद मिल गई भोजपुर में शाहबाद डिस्ट्रिक्ट जिसको बोलते हैं बिहार का और उस पे उन्होंने गन्ने की खेती की अमंग अदर थिंग्स और ये बात हो गई 1800 लगभग 60 1870 के बीच की बात है और आपको तो पता है कि अंग्रेजों की निगाह इस तरफ कितनी तेज रहती थी यानी कि अगर उनको कोई ऑन्ट्रप्रन दिख गया जो कि रैक्स टू रिचेस की कहानी को साकार कर सके तो फिर उसको पूरी तरह सपोर्ट करते थे और उसमें खूब इन्वेस्ट करते थे जयप्रकाश लाल के बेटे यानी मेरी माँ के बाबा जिनका नाम था हरिहर प्रसाद सिंह तो वो भी राय बहादुर थे राय बहादुर हरिहर प्रसाद सिंह तो हरी जी के नाम से जाने जाते थे तो हरी जी वॉज टेरिफिक ऑन्ट्रप्रन्योर इट टर्न आउट एंड इट इज नॉट कॉमन फॉर कास्ट फैमिलीज टू प्रोड्यूस टेरिफिक नॉट गो विद आर कास्ट डी एन ए बाय एंड लार्ज लेकिन उनमें थी क्षमता तो उनको अंग्रेजों ने कोई बीस हजार एकड़ जमीन अवॉर्ड की समटाइम इन दर्ली नाइनटीन हंड्रेड और वो जमीन उनको दी गई बर्मा में आज के म्यांमार में से जो कि आज यंगोन बोलते हैं उससे कोई दो ढाई सौ किलोमीटर उत्तर की तरफ टूवर्ड्स मैंडले In 1886 the famine commission of India recommended that Indians from congested areas in India should be encouraged to migrate to Burma for the development of waste and unproductive lands and that such effort should be left to private enterprise The government of Burma started to lease large areas to private enterprises for the development of agriculture 
A lease of 15,000 acres was given to an Indian zamindar from the Shahabad district of Bihar, the Diwan of the Maharaja of Dumrao in 1894. Oh, jungle hmm. the jungle and then there was sugar cane plantation. Hmm. And uh, then subsequent to that, remit was that he set up a sugar factory. The sugar industry was so dependent upon slavery that the abolition of the latter jeopardized its existence. On August 1st, 1834, the entire system of slavery in the British colonies and possessions was abolished. The liberated slaves in many cases refused to work and in many of the islands, they left the plantations in great numbers. The production of the British colonies in the West Indies dropped considerably, their sugar exportation decreasing from 17,000 tons to 8,000 tons. The different states of the American continent likewise eventually abolished slavery, this leading to a turning point in the sugar production of these countries. Since slavery had never been of much consequence either in Asia or Australia, the sugar production there gradually developed and filled the gap caused by a decrease in the American production. The remit was that he set up a sugar factory. But that's all about the story that is very important. In 1915, the Dumrao Maharaja, Parnana's previous employer, he had a case in the district court. Mein, aram. The charge was that he, the Maharaja's son, is entitled to that land in Burma. Because after all, who is Babu Hariji? He hmm. was our employee. We should have got the land award, not him. And he won that case in uh, the sessions court in Ara. But Babu Hariji, not to be put down or not to yes. be defeated by that, made an appeal in Patna High Court and and he won that appeal. Uske baad ye case jata hai Privy Council in London. Because Dhrav Maharaja was not to be defeated either. London and he hires one of the most uh, expensive and powerful lawyers in the country, Chitranjan Das, the freedom fighter. Or Dusri or say, Mirimake Baba Te, Haiji, he got hold of Rajinda Prashad, later on to be first president of India. At that time, a young lawyer, 40, 30 years before independence. And uh, Motilal Nehru was a uh, bar at law and you know, uh, one of the most uh, expensive lawyers in the country. They all go to London and they are there to fight each other. So, this is also a part of the world's history in the past. In the past, there will be many times in the colonial age that we will be able to get our own fights. तो वहां पे बाबू हरी जी एक जो उनका शौक था कि वो जहां जाते थे वहां से एक लवादा जरूर बनवाते थे अपने लिए फ्लोइंग रोब इट कुड बी ऑफ एनी फाइन टेक्सचर लाइक सिल्क एंड इट वुड हैव वेरियस काइंड्स ऑफ ज्यूल्स समटाइम्स अडोर्निंग इट्स एजेस व्हाट ही वुड वेयर वेर एवर ही वुड बी वेर वेदर ही वाज इन आरा इन बिहार और इन टोक्यो इन जापान ही वुड हैव गॉन टू बॉन्ड स्ट्रीट और सेविल रो और वन ऑफ द स्ट्रीट्स इन लंडन ऑक्सफोर्ड स्ट्रीट जहां पे उस तरह के कुछ टेनिंग वो दर्जी बैठते थे वहां पे uh, he sees somebody dressed very similar to him coming from the other side. Hmm. So then they smile at each other and they go to a tea room where they start drinking tea. Hmm. And then for about an hour they tell each other stories and they realize uh, they're all both of course from Bihar and so on. 
and then at the end of the meeting uh, my great grandfather he asks the other gentleman rawa ke bani and who are you sir what is rawa rawa is a very high honorific in bhojpuri it's higher than aap and so on it's a bit like uh, your honor kind of uh, you know rawa is somebody you address somebody of high pedigree and authority with rawa bani ke who are you sir Mm. and then they realize that they've come to london to fight each other in the legal case so that is the dumrao maharaja that is the dumrao maharaja and they had never met, met each other in real life their lawyers had been fighting each other in the court room but in real life they had not met each other so they have a full conversation with each other they, they joke have. around with each other without coming to know that they are fighting each other without and who they are and who they are बट एक घंटे बाद तो बहुत देर हो जाती है यानी कि प्यार मोहब्बत हो जाती है उस उस समय तक और फिर देन टू गो एंड फाइट इच अदर इन अ पब्लिक कोर्ट रूम दैट डजेंट तो यू नो गुड फॉर्म स्टिल प्रिवेल्ड इन दोज टाइम सो दे क्वाइट हैप्पीली अग्री टू डू एन आउट ऑफ कोर्ट टू दिस डे नो बडी नोज वॉट द आउट ऑफ कोर्ट सेटलमेंट वॉज but the lawyers and particularly chitranjan das and motilal nehru were very disappointed he you know in those days apparently he used to charge thousands of rupees per day uh, right. motilal they said see ke liye aap log ne london bulwaya ki you will not fight each other you know so uh Rajendra Babu on the other hand was actually quite relieved that he didn't have to do the honors in court and so on and in fact if you read Rajendra Babu's uh, memoirs then he mentions the Ziawadi land grant case I never got rich clients only one man Rai Bahadur Harihar Prasad Singh from the day I started practice as a lawyer gave me cases in his zamindari both big and small he knew me and even supported my travel abroad it so happened his case was the last case i ever fought because at the time i left law i was working on a big case of his after that gandhi ji recruited him for champaran satyagraha and then the rest of the freedom struggle in any case the land ultimately fell to my great grandfather to unhone wahan pe wo pura gaon basaya बाद में जाके शहर हो गया जिसको जियाबुद्दीन कहते हैं के बाद क्या होता है कि फैक्ट्री कम्स इनटू एग्जिस्टेंस द पर्सन हु डिजाइन द फैक्ट्री वाज अ डच केमिस्ट आई फॉरगेट हिज नेम बाबू हरि जी वेंट ऑल द वे टू जावा टू फाइंड हिम By the early decades of the 20th century when sugar manufacture elsewhere in Asia was only just beginning to be industrialized Java's colonial sugar factories stood on a par technologically with the best in the world He got him to Burma he stayed at the factory for several years uh, set it up mm. and by the 1930s it was the largest sugar mill in asia it was producing a huge amount of sugar then what happens is something interesting which is the second world war so 1939 september the second world war begins after december 41 i think when pearl harbor is bombed by the japanese kamikaze pilots mm-hmm. when japan enters the war one of the things they start doing is start making for india from the east yeah uh, over thailand burma and so on. Mm. japanese planes start strafing and bombing uh, mm. myanmar burma at which point my family had to take cover all indians and there were many indians in burma at that time they all ran for their lives and remember this is the day when bombers are rare i mean bombers have just about entered the horizons you know mm. 
So my great grandfather Hariji, he says that we all have to head home to India, and he insists that he will come by land on the elephant mm. with the entourage because mm. he had settled up some twenty thousand Biharis and East UP people from Gorakhpur and Balia and so on in Jawahar. Uh, so many of them, they ran. They all came with the caravan through the jungles of Mandalay, through the northeast of India. Mm. Yeah, it took them, I think, four to six weeks or something. Mm. Uh, when they left Burma, the question was, what was going to happen to the sugar factory? Exactly. When the question came up. A young man by the name of Baleshwar Prasad, who happened to be an uncle of my mother, Chacha. Uh, so Baleshwar Babu, who was at that time all of twenty-three or twenty-four years old, not very old at all, hmm. but in those days twenty-three, twenty-four meant something. So he said, "Ham bani na, ham dekha." So I am here. I will see to the factory. Mm. So he took charge of the right. factory, and uh, the rest of the family and entourage they left. A month goes by, and the Japanese are bombing Myanmar all over the place. The Battle of Burma has reached a test of strength between the Japs and the Allies. On the Arakan Front in the south, the British push forward. Tommies haven't lost their sense of humor in this grueling jungle warfare. There are no shows from home to bolster their morale, but they take care of that themselves. The advance is covered by an umbrella of planes. And then a telegram cable arrives in Ara, which is mm. where uh, my family was staying, and the cable says, "Bombing over, factory safe." Letter follows. BP. Then the letter which followed a few weeks later it just had one big card inside it. And the card was completely black. There was nothing else. No explanation. No words. Nothing. So my great grandfather Babu Hari Ji, he opens the thing, finds this black thing, mystified. कुछ नहीं पता ये है क्या? तो when Balishwar Babu comes to Ara few months later, हाँ, he asks him, ये कब आये? What the hell is this? So he said, लोग अगर गौर से देखी ना, I mean, please your honour, can you please look at it more carefully? So he says yes, I'm looking at it, but I don't find anything interesting here. So he says, if you look carefully, you'll find a white dot in there. That's our sugar factory. Says, What? <laughs> so, what Sara jo kala tha? This is an aerial shot of the whole region, and the entire black area was what the Japanese had found. It was a Japanese plane from which he took the shot, shot of the bombed area and the sugar factory in the middle of it, and the sugar factory remained intact. Uh huh. So the question was, how did it remain intact? Uh huh. The, uh, what did you do to protect it? Hmm. So he says, Rawa ke yad ho ki ki hamni sab Angrezwa sab ke five thousand bag chini bhejat rahi. We used to send five thousand bags of sugar to the British every month. Okere me se dhai hazar Japaniya sabke bhej daliya, dhai hazar Angrezwa sabke. So I just distributed it such that two thousand five hundred bags went to the Japanese, the other two thousand five hundred bags went to the English, <laughs> and that way we were protected both from the English and the Japanese. Not only that, but the homestead, the house, both hmm. in Jawadi as well as in Rangoon, ah. was handed over to the INA, Subhash Chandra Bose. Neta ji lived there. She 
<laughs> so basically baleshwar babu that's why he became such an ace diplomat and became an ambassador to many countries later on because he knew how to keep all sides happy and quiet and and not attack and and, and take some and from. save the sugar factory and save the sugar factory. original non aligned movement of india <laughs>